Hello and welcome to The Construction Show. We are filming episodes from WefTech in Chicago. We have Inland Tarp and Liner. Um, we have two guests on the show who are, are live at the event. I get to be here in studio. Gowdy's on site uh, filming and connecting us. And we have William Powell, Director of Business Development, and Leo Cortez. He is the RCR Product Man Manager, and RCR is going to be a big topic that we're going to have today. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. How are you doing? How are you? Good. I'm, I'm very well. Um, where, where's everybody coming from? You're in Chicago, but I think both of you traveled from different places, right? Yes, sir. I'm uh, from Washington State. Uh, Inland Tarpon Liners headquarters is in Moses Lake, Washington. So I uh, traveled across the country to get down here to Chicago. Enjoy their uh, beautiful summer weather, what's left of it. Yeah, I heard the weather's good. And then where are you from, William? Uh, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. So uh, it was just a direct flight over here. It wasn't too bad, about two hours, but uh, we're thankful to be here and and uh, definitely happy about the cooler weather than down there in Texas. Yeah, I, I think I was saying off air, we're actually heading to Texas. We're doing the uh, the oil show, PBIOS, down there. And I think in Odessa, which is sort of, you, I think you have a plant or, there, right? Yes, we do. That's one of our many uh, manufacturing facilities. We have three in the United States. Well, let, let's let, let's keep on that with that vein. Can you tell us uh, just a little bit about ITL for people that are just getting introduced to the company? Yeah, definitely. So uh, we've been around for about 45 years, and originally we uh, came into the industry in the HATAR business. Uh, and then slowly but surely, we kind of moved our way into the oil and gas industry uh, around 2005. In 2019, we introduced a new product called ITL RCR uh, that Leo over here headed up. Um, and pretty much since then, our entire motto has been to provide trusted solutions to our customers, uh, products that have been rigorously tested, uh, and also provide you know on-site assistance and field assistance for any sort of installations moving forward. How um, so? I was going to ask the so sorry. When did this product come online? The RCR two thousand nineteen. Two thousand nineteen. So is this? Out of out of all your product lines, what are maybe the again just to help people understand? What are sort of your top three or four product lines, or or is it such a range for you? I would say our top product lines right now would uh, range from LLDPE, HGPE products, uh, coated woven polyethylenes or CWPE. We also have a uh, product exclusive to ITL, which is our XGL series, the laminated um, LLDPE product. Uh, it's about five or six different layers. Uh, and then obviously we have the RCR as well. So um, we're favored towards the RCR because it's our newer product and mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of success in it. But uh, definitely what keeps the lights on is that we handle uh, fabrication at all three of those facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, we are one of the largest fabricators in the United States. Um, and we definitely uh, provide, like I said earlier, that rigorous testing um, that keeps us uh, on the forefront of the technology. Let's talk about our heavy industry tour brought to you by Savannah Equipment, supplying mining equipment worldwide. We are heading to events across North America, Africa, and Australia, and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of our Crownsman's heavy industry world tour. Studs and helmets use cutting edge head protection components used previously only in extreme sports helmets now utilized in both the Studson's Type 2 models. The SHK-1 and SHK-1 full brim models are the most innovative helmets on any job site. Offering a revolutionary combination of choroid and twice-me technologies, this Studson full brim helmet is the first of its kind in the Type 2 category, providing you with the protection and comfort you need to get the job done. Saving lives one helmet at a time, Studson, where safety meets innovation. You can visit them at studson.com to learn more. Zero Knox is leading the electrification of off-highway commercial and industrial vehicles. They provide a platform for clean energy technology to get to market through powertrain solutions, development partnerships, and electrification kit solutions for conversions. Reduce carbon emissions without diminishing vehicle performance or being restricted by high costs. Partner with Zero Knox, like many of the world's leading OEMs, as they solve challenges across multiple continents with their cleaner and higher performing technology. Zero Knox solutions are designed and engineered in America with offices in Porterville, California. Learn more at zeronox.com. Well, we're going to do two more episodes uh, with ITL. So we're going to be covering some of those, I think. And um, but So we're going to focus on RCR for the audience. So 
Um, if you're watching this episode, there will be links um, as we bring those other two episodes online. There'll be links to the other episodes. You'll be able to sort of cross cross link and, and learn more about um, ITL from there. But uh, Leo, we're going to go over to you. Can you tell us a little bit about the RCR product? Yeah, so you know, ITL RCR is classified as a GCCM product. Uh, GCCM in the geosynthetic world uh, is a geosynthetic cementitious composite mat. Uh, kind of a mouthful, so uh, yeah. <laughs> GCCM. Uh, and then uh, ITL reinforced concrete roll, uh, just to, you know, acronyms, uh, ITL, RCR. And if, pretty much if you think of a blanket, uh, it, it's basically just a concrete blanket. You uh, lay it down just like, a, you know, a fabric, and then you simply spray water on it. Once you hydrate it, it turns into cement. You've got yourself a concrete product. Um, the product itself comes like a roll of carpet, uh, 16 feet, 7 inches uh, wide, and then you unroll the material and it's 65 feet, uh, 4 inches long. So you, uh, yeah, it, it's basically just a, a rolled up concrete carpet, um, unroll the material, easy to cut, you just cut it with a utility blade able to go around any uh, type of structures or penetrations. And uh, once it's in place, you simply spray it with water and you're good to go. You've got yourself a uh, concrete mat. ITL RCR is manufactured using the needle punching uh, method. And that is simply using two non-wovens and placing your cement mix in the middle. Um, it's no hazardous waste. It's a uh, polypropylene on 100% polypropylene on the bottom. You got a layer of cement, and then you have a uh, 100% polypropylene on top. Uh, you simply needle punch the material together. It creates uh, one composite, and it's a uh, yeah, it's just a solid piece of material. Keeps that same consistency all the way through. Um, easy to deploy. Easy to work with. Um, when you see the orange iron of a ditch witch machine out in the field, you can be sure of one thing. A job is getting done. As the leading manufacturer of underground construction equipment, Ditch Witch has been a catalyst of innovation for the industry since the day they were founded. And with a worldwide and world-class dealership network that features over 175 dealerships across the globe, this equipment is backed by the best. Learn more at ditchwitch.com. Based in Southern California, Enhanced Scanning has performed thousands of projects on construction sites across the U.S. in an effort to help its customers find the unfindable. Enhanced Scanning combines ground-penetrating radar, laser scanning, and drone inspection services to provide comprehensive deliverables for their customers' fast-paced timelines, all without sacrificing quality or communication. To learn more, you can visit them at EnhancedScanning.com or find them on LinkedIn at Enhanced Scanning. You're, you're talking about it very, very just just like kind of like it's always been in the market. I've never seen people rolling out cement. So this is kind of <laughs> new for me. <laughs> is yeah. this... And that is true. You don't see a lot of, uh, I mean, we, it's recently got ASTM uh, standards developed for it. It is something that is uh, new to the market. It's a new type of geosynthetic. We're just uh, trying to get out there. Um, we've done a lot of work with different uh, types of laboratories, testing different components of uh, our GCCM. Uh, originally, because it's a new type of material, we were testing more toward uh, similar types of uh, composites and, you know, obviously testing the, the cement material. Uh, we are have developed some ATM, ASTM standards around GCCM, and we are continuing to, to develop uh, more standards around it. But we, uh, yeah, we're really happy with the material uh it's been working great in the mining industry um mm. itl rcr is uh msha approved we have a uh, an ic number for the material it is it was tested by the department of labor and classified as fire resistant and it is able to be taken down into the mines and stored underground um, um wow is it um is this structural like what? What are the like? Can it be driven on? Is it is it a protective cement? I'm just trying to understand what the applications yeah, if, are. Maybe if you either think one of it, you. It's more like a uh, um, a reinforced uh, armor. So mm. it it can be driven on. Uh, you know, of course, it's it's only a half inch thick. 
So right. you don't want to use steel tracks and be churning on it. But it is, it's, it's not meant for structural purposes. First of all, I need to make sure that I'm clear on that one. Um, so you're not going to build a house with it or anything like that. You know, um, but you, you don't want to use it as a bridge. It's great for really for like lining channels. Um, mm. Being from an agricultural area, I mean, originally when, uh, when we started with RCR, that was our initial uh, thought was, you know, for, for this area for uh, remediating uh, cement structures, uh, cement canals, uh, mm. instead of having to pull the concrete out and replace it, you simply go right over the top with right. RCR. It's got a 30 year warranty. You know, it, it's a great material for as it, to use as a lining material to, you know, remediate concrete or, uh, uh, provide protection to a, a geomembrane or to help uh, stabilize the slope. Um, William, just to bring you in for a second, um, where, yeah. what are the applications that you're, uh, I mean, what, is, what other things can it be used for? And, and what are you, what is sort of your message at a place like WefTech? Um, who are you trying to connect with and, and what applications are you hoping to, for people to onboard uh, at, a, at an event like WefTech? Well, that's a great question. So uh, I'll address just kind of the different applications that we have right now that we're seeing in several markets. Um, you know, it's ranging from erosion control to culvert lining. Uh, the whole point of this material is just the ease of installation. Um, you know, it's night and day when it comes to installation as far as versus traditional concrete. You know, you'll have your pros and cons. It's not going to it's not going to be the same as uh, six century enforced uh, rebar, but. It'll definitely go down a heck of a lot faster. So I'd say for this particular show right now, um, you know, a lot of what people are looking for is ways to channel water uh, and directionally change the flow. So RCRs, like he was mentioning earlier, RCRs are a great way to line channels and provide a hard armored solution uh, that's long lasting that can take that hydraulic, um, that continuous uh, movement of water and then you know change the direction of it so that it prevents erosion and is channeled into the the correct uh, um, movement. Can, just can I do? Can we do a bit of a comparison? So what what would they do? And you mentioned mining, and so we'll try to kind of piece it all together. Let's say on a culvert or a channel, what what would have been done before? So originally they would lay cement down, or in the culvert they, they'd put the piping in. What would have they done at the corro once corrosion started to happen or that original cement had started to break apart? Generally speaking, you know, in a culvert, it's going to fail from the from the bottom up right. unless you're having some sort of, uh, you know, corrosion on the top of the actual culvert itself. Um, and generally that will go up to the water line, which is half the diameter of the pipe. So um, whenever we're looking at it, traditionally speaking, you would just remove that culvert if it's a metal culvert uh, or HGPE, et cetera. Um, which would in turn require you to completely excavate the pipe, rip up the road. If there is a road, go through somebody's yard. Um, you know, it's, it's a long process. It's definitely not something that you can do in half a day, which is what our product allows us to do. Um, you know, we would go in there and, um, you could do it with traditional concrete. You can use quick crete, um, or just really any sort of concrete. It doesn't have to be quick crete, but, uh, you can use that to fill the void. Um, but with our material, you actually can go in there with traditional subgrade, pea gravel, or concrete, anything that you want to just to fill the void, uh, the, por the portion that's been undermined in that pipe. And then you'll take the roll and uh, you'll cut it into the sections that take it up to the water line. And then you'll roll it out starting from the front end of the culvert and then take it all the way to the box. And then you'll uh, fasten it to the box with a stainless steel batten strip four inch uh, anchor bolts and then along the sides just trying to create a visual here so you can yeah, understand yeah, yeah. what we do um along the side you'll just do one inch self-tapping screws basically every four to six inches and then usually a bead of Cicaflex or construction adhesive uh we're really we don't have a huge recommendation on what type of adhesive it's just an added layer of protection to make sure water doesn't get behind the system so once you do that you wet it down and uh, three to four hours, you can walk on it. 24 hours, you're at 90% uh, cure strength, um, depending on which product line you end up going with. And, uh, you know, it, it can't cure underwater. So if you do have a rain event, uh, you don't have to worry about the products uh, not curing. So I can kind of help uh, 
with that visualization too. If you look right behind us in that picture, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, the, that he's one. actually installing RCR on a uh, on a culvert, so it's just like laying that blanket down. I mean, it, it it'll form right to the ribs, uh, you know, lays right in place. You're simply, uh, you know, the tobacco William said we just use the as you can see the gentleman doing, um, you know, self tapping screws and and connect the material to the pipe and then yeah just go ahead and uh hydrate it or you know if you dammed off the culvert you can uh pull up whatever you dammed it with and let the water hydrate the material itself it will cure underwater wow is the uh, the thing that comes to my mind is for municipalities um i i watch some of these projects i've i've got a major project going right outside our apartment <laughs> right now and so uh a major bridge being built and along with the bridge I, I forget how i forget how many millions or whatever it is to build this thing but it's a huge investment um and they're having all they're, they're pulling up all sorts of things and just watching the time it takes it must be never mind the actual yeah. work just the permitting to go through people's yards and pull yep. roads up and do all this crazy stuff that they have to do. That must be a big sell. Um, are the, is the market, is the market picking it up? Um, how much of a, a savings it actually is just the time of, of planning these, these uh, repairs out. Definitely. I mean, you know, it's, it's nine day, as I said before, when you go in, we'll do, you know, we'll start out with a presentation uh, on the municipal or parish level, uh, depending on what state you're in. There's mm-hmm. always different names. And, uh, you know, it, we always want to make sure that we're in front of the right individuals. You know, we're solutions providers first. So we want to make sure we're addressing the pain points that the city has. You know, RCR is a great fit, but sometimes it's not the right application. Um, you know, we are limited with certain things like hydraulic data. Um, you know, we're constantly trying to perfect the the product and the testing that we have for GCCMs as a whole, not just RCR in general. Um, but they really are picking it up. I mean, it's it's uh, generally speaking, we do a presentation and then there's implementation within 30 to 60 days. So um, self uh, performing the work is a huge cost savings too. Uh, rather than it having to go out to bid, the municipalities are able to purchase this material um, mm. under their threshold and then have their waterworks guys and gals um, take care of it and do it themselves just because of that minimal installation crew. You only need about four to five people to do this. And we're actually that fifth person because we do come on site for. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah, we're always on site for our installations, whether it's Leo or myself. Um, you know, there's no preferred installer program because of that reason. Uh, we always want to make sure that we have a successful installation at the beginning. 95% of failures are because of installation. So it's just a very easy thing for us to, um, to always be able to, to cover whenever we're installing. Are there some products that stand out to you to sort of, again, you were doing the visual before and that picture behind you. Are there some, uh, um, like Leo, you mentioned the mining. I, I think I'd like to go back to that. Um, but are there other uh, examples that you've installed that maybe just sort of stand out as good examples for people listening? Um, I know, like you're saying, the ease of installation. Um, this one was, was in a mine. It was actually for a irrigation district. But mm-hmm. uh, down south, they are uh, trying to move from your traditional open channel uh, uh, waterways over to underground piping. Um just to, you know, water conservation. So uh, some of the places that have been able to uh, to start making that transition to where they're going from, they'll, they'll get to suit uh, certain parts where they can get that far with the underground pipes, but then they have to go back to the uh, open channel, the original right. canal. Um, in areas like that, what they'll do is just uh, make a dog leg in the, you know, the end of the pipe. Um, dog legged over to the to the original channel now you're going to have a lot of uh high flowing water through there and you're creating you know the perfect opportunity for erosion to just tear up that uh that uh that channel right there and usually they're earth and canals so uh some of the benefits and and examples like that that we've done is being able to go through and install the product in you know a day or two as opposed to um, 
bringing in not only taking a lot more time to do it in traditional concrete, but also having to bring in special machinery, you know, uh, professionals who are going to be able to finish the, the concrete structure. Where with RCR, we are able to do it just with the, um, you know, with their maintenance crew. Where they go out there, they'll dig it with the, uh, dig that transition with their own excavator, and then they'll just use their guys to install the RCR. Um, RCR, it's, it's as easy as laying down, a, you know, basically like a, a carpet. And, and we're there up front to help you with the planning. Uh, yep. That way we can pre plan how many days it's going to take, you know, how many days the water is going to have to be off. Uh, in most instances, it's three days um, from start to finish. But yeah, it's a nice quick uh, installation. No special tools are required. Uh, you know, you lay the material down with a, a spreader bar, and then you uh, seal the material. When you have multiple panels, you uh, seal it with a thermal fusion welding, which is basically just using a handheld propane torch. Um, take care of your seams and then hydrate it. And a lot of those, they, they need the water immediately. So you just open the gate back up, let the water flow, and uh, and then you spray the sides of it. And, you know, it's a, it's a nice quick turnaround. You were saying, so uh, that, that's, in, get, that's on a dirt bottom then. You're, you mm -hmm. are putting that right on the dirt bottom. So you're rolling yes, it sir. out. And then it's, so is it forming that, sorry, some of these will be lame in questions, but like on the culvert, it's forming to the culvert. Does that, is that sort of the same idea that it's going to form to the earth that it's laid in? Yes, sir. It, uh, it, it opposed to traditional concrete. I know you, a lot of people, you think you lay the concrete down, you know, it, uh, it gets flat on the top and then you use some type of finishing tool. Um, with RCR, you lay it down and it's going to, uh, mirror whatever your subgrade is. Mm. So, you know, like behind us in the culvert, you lay it down on a culvert pipe, you're going to see all the all those ribs. It's going to form down into it. Um, same thing with the uh, a, a channel, earthen channel. Um, you just want to make sure you get good compaction, and um, yeah, then just lay it right over the top of it, and it's going to form to you know form to that subgrade. William, there's I've got a note too. Um, there was uh, about enhancing oil quality, and I wanted to ask you about that one because it's I, I've got it in front of me, and I didn't want to miss that. Uh, do you know what that's referring to? Enhancing, you saying I've enhancing, got it, enhancing oil quality? soil quality in Louisiana? Quality. I've got it on a note. <laughs> in front uh, of me. Well, I mean, I'll definitely say as far as uh, it, it won't, um, it's not a filtration product to, you know to say but it will prevent vegetation i mean it's mm. got that geosynthetic on the back which uh naturally mm. will prevent silt fines vegetation from growing up through the system uh unlike traditional concrete you know that's uh that's the reason why you see grass growing concrete sometimes is because grass will always find a way it's going to grow up through the small uh small openings and cracks uh, that that come from just over the lifespan of the concrete itself. That's kind of what I would think would be uh, being able to protect the soil, but uh, right. it is you know it's impermeable to a certain certain level, but it, it is not fully contained. It will sweat like traditional concrete right. does on the backside. So Has, and that's one thing. Oh, sorry, that, sorry, that we can help with is that yeah. uh, it is not um, a hundred percent impermeable. So if you did need a uh, hundred percent containment and you had some type of uh, chemical, mm -hmm. then we would be able to provide you the correct uh, geomembrane to put underneath it. To, right. Yeah. You know, make sure you got. We've got the liners. Well, that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, you've got the liners. Yeah. Well, that's we yeah. Well, I'm glad we clarified that, and we'll be talking more about those in the other episodes. So, um, yeah. Hesitancy in the market. Um, it's, it's always an interesting, I mean, I, I've experienced doing this show, <laughs> you know, we used, we used to, it was all we could do to do 12 episodes in a year. Now we can do a couple hundred. It takes time sometimes. Um, what are, what are some of the hesitancies when you're talking to people either at the event or at the market or at the R and D stage? Let's just talk about some of those questions that have been, that have come up over people thinking about onboarding it. Can we take that one? Yeah. So I would say hesitancy really like any product, you know, that's less than 10 years old, right? Um, if it's not hard spec, if another engineering firm can't look uh, at uh, someone else's work and say, oh, it worked over here, it's just taking that leap. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really where ITL bridges the gap is because we shepherd new projects or we call them pilot projects with the municipalities and the engineering firms to reassure mm -hmm. them that it's going to be a success. 
So I would say that's kind of the hesitancy of just jumping into something new. Um, it just being a new product and all. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think it's kind of up and down, um, but we have been getting some really, really good feedback. Uh, I, I would say that that's kind of the exception. Uh, hearing yeah, that. I think a big part of it too is just, it's, it's new. So I mean, it's like everything else new, you know, until uh, people are hesitant. Well, this is the same way we've always been doing it. So we're just going to continue to do it this way, which is turning around and biting them a couple of times or like a roadside ditch that that's getting a uh, uh, excess amount of water uh, down in and it blows the ditch out. So then they'll go back through and, and just, well, usually all we do is go and refill it again. Yeah, with rock rip wrap. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, we're just going to keep doing rock rip wrap every, you know, every six right. months. And, you know, that yeah. costs a certain amount every time. Yeah, so so we are starting to turn some heads as we get, you know, our projects like that and show them, look, this is the same. Uh, here's a case study. Exactly similar pro- uh, problem that you're having. Here's how we were able to, uh, to address that problem. Um, so it, it's just... You know, being able to show people that this is a uh, is an effective solution, and then there, there's always the, uh, you know, they got a bid to do it the traditional way, and they're used to paying X I, amount of money. I and was wondering about that still, actually. Yeah, I, yeah. That's, I was wondering about that. Just specifications. It's it's like saying, hey, we got a new way of wiring an electrical building, and people <laughs> like, well, that's that's it's it is wonderful, but we can't use it because we have these specs that that are outlined by the municipality. You must run into that. I would say when we run into that type of scenario, it's actually not as hard as people think. Oh. Um, mainly because we have done a lot of the legwork on the back end with our um, in-house uh, technical experts to be able to provide those CAD files, to be able to provide those installation requirements. You know, mm. the the proof is in the details, and then also um, in the installation. So we can provide about ninety percent of a hard spec for any sort of engineering firm to be able to plug and play, so to speak, um, the product. But again, it's all about buying into the product first if they think it's going to be a good application because we don't want to hard spec into a solution that or provide a solution that's not going to work for the end user. That's not what we're about. Leo, Leo you were on the product side um, you're, as a product manager. What has been, what's your background coming into this? Um, so I've been... Uh, Born and raised in the construction field, um, uh, doing concrete and putting up structures my whole life. Um, but I did spend, uh, after college, I got into the chemical industry, spent the last 17 years before coming to ITL, uh, working with uh, <laughs> working with reactors and high pressure chemicals and gases. Uh, so a little different. So cool. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but yeah, actually had the opportunity to uh Learn about the product. Um, was fortunate enough just to know somebody that was uh, part of the um, uh, the ITL team. Uh, you know, they got a lot of uh, uh, geniuses when it comes to uh, plastics, plastics engineers, and they said they had a new product. They knew a ton about the uh, the the plastic part of it, but were had some questions when it came to the uh, cement. And so. Mm-hmm. We just started uh, bouncing stuff off each other. I, I was throwing a lot of curveballs at the material, um, a lot like you and a lot like 90%, it seems like, of the people that we speak with. I've never heard of a, a GCCM. <laughs> sure but, oh, it's a what? That sounds made up. I don't think that's true. Does it do this? Can you use it here? You know, what can, can we do this kind of test on it? What happens if I put a torch on it? Uh, I got a friend who owns a molten iron, you know, makes a... Uh, iron uh uh what do you call it iron for the sewer caps i mean what happens if we pour probably never going to get molten iron poured on it you know 1800 degrees but let's, let's see what happens so just was super intrigued with the material and uh mm. yeah it's uh it's awesome and i was happy to to be asked about it and you know told him yeah i I'd definitely love to jump on board and you know uh let's get a lot of the uh jump into the testing so we uh we started testing it for not just you know, cement, but also testing it for similar products and then got involved in the ASTM committee and uh, helping develop, you know, more testing around GCCMs as a whole. And and then William, what about you? What's your, what what's your story coming on board? You haven't been, you haven't been with them that long, have you? Well, you know, I actually just hit my one year. Uh, what was it like a day ago? I think it was on Monday <laughs> so, yeah. officially. Or and so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely. It's been quite the ride. Um, I always give Leo and uh, 
uh, Matt Purcell uh, a hard time because I came on on a Monday and then I was at a trade show on a Wednesday. So <laughs> yeah. they, they, they were uh, they were confident, and part of that was because of my experience in geosynthetics. Um, predominantly, I have a very vast experience in uh, erosion control products and geosynthetics, and in, in turn, and so. Uh, that was something, a quality that they were looking for. Uh, they were looking at bringing a uh, solutions-based mindset into the ITL family uh, to complement our extreme passion for being detailed and maintaining high-quality materials. So that was kind of why they brought me on and um, also to fill a sales role as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I had actually installed ITL RCR. Um, I did, uh, I was on site for the first two projects in the state of Texas, um, and, uh, prior to coming to ITL and, um, I saw an immediate need. I mean, I, I fell in love with the product immediately. So I, I knew it was going to be big and when the opportunity arised, I was, uh, was very happy to hear that they wanted me to come be a part of the family. So yeah, it's quite uh, when when you got booked on the show, the uh, Rory who who helped, I think he worked with Jen, I think to mm-hmm. organize mm-hmm. everything. Yep. Um, he actually phoned me and said about this product. Um, and we we book a lot of shows, so I don't get a phone call with every product. Sometimes it's a day there before I'm getting That's to see good. what's the topic. That's a good thing. No, he was really excited about it, and it's it's going to be interesting to see it in the coming into the market because. It just seems like there would be the oh the one thing I was before I let you go. What a, where are the applications? Um, and this is specific to like my area uh, in BC here in Canada. Is we've had a lot of flooding over the years, and so they're putting in new channels, and they're I would assume they're rerouting even like rivers and all. There's all kinds of stuff happening here. If you drive up. Um, one of our main highways that connects the interior uh, to the coast, uh, you've never seen so many machines just everywhere. Um, yeah. Is this is this an application? Could you use it in that type of application where uh, you're uh, like like flooding and all these cities like um, farmland that's having they're having to reroute channels and all that type of stuff? Are you seeing in that type of application? I know it's sort of a curveball, but I'm just curious. Our, I know we've had a, a projects up in Canada where we've actually rerouted water um, to, uh, down in tributaries, and we've had to get some extensive water testing done with the material mm. just to make sure before we were able to, uh, you know, pursue those applications that it wasn't going to endanger any of the wildlife. Um, right. But yeah, that that's you know, shoot, and metals that. testing and microbial testing as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it can it can be used for those applications or just even man built channels as well. Like the oh, yeah, definitely. I yeah. mean, if you have a talented dirt work, you know, crew uh, that you know their main goal is to take a you know a, a place that's being over over hydrated and and then channelize it and create a new thing. This would be a perfect solution for that. Right. Uh, as far as it maintaining the life of that uh, the, that design. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it would definitely provide a hard on solution. And I think a big part of bringing, you know, this type of material, uh, uh, GCCM material to market is we've done applications where, you know, we know the, the DOT has asked us to uh, to get it approved to, to line culverts. Um, the mining industry asked us to get it approved, uh, certified in order to uh, uh, protect slopes, you know, when they're uh, tailing spawns. Uh, yep. we're, we're finding different applications. We knew it was going to be great for channeling water, but we're also getting, you know, uh, underneath uh, golf bunkers. You know, they're yeah. like, yeah, here, the, this right. is the way the current method that we use to do it. This stuff would be awesome. Is it going to work? And then we go do an application and they're like, this is going to change the golf bunker industry. And they're like, right. oh, hey, that's awesome. You know, so yeah. we, as we come to, uh, introduce the product more to the market and we're starting to get asked more and more things uh, about different types of applications that you know we we just haven't thought of yet so we think there's there's probably a lot more opportunities out there that we just uh we aren't aware of yet so. but the, so that's a good you brought up a good point we can close with this is the certification so as you do new applications do you often need to though go get the product then certified for that particular one no we've actually been i mean 
No, I don't. I don't think we've really had that issue. It's more getting expected. Yeah, now it's more getting the, expected. Okay. But I mean, uh, you know, we, we believe in this product strongly, and we definitely think that it's worth the investment, uh, especially if it's going to be able to solve a, a a problem that's been you know a pain point for a community for twenty plus years. Right. Well, there's probably some local communities where, where I'm where yeah. I'm originally from. They've had some issues that it sounds like this is the product to actually probably fix it. Um, and I think they're doing the thing where they're putting the uh, rip wrap, wrap in. I'm telling you, anywhere that you see rock, I mean, this is a fantastic um, product to sub sub out rip wrap because you don't have to worry about grass growing up through it, spraying it down, yeah. weed killer, all that sinking so, into the ground, sinking into the ground, anything. Yeah. Gentlemen, I know you've got a show to get back to, and uh, and th- thank you for taking the time. I'll let you, I'll, we'll leave it there. Um, we're going to have yeah. lots of links to their products and even your own LinkedIn so people can connect with you. I really do appreciate okay. you taking the time during a show to do this with us, and uh, hopefully, well, no, we, you're, we got two more with you. So uh, yeah. thanks again, okay. and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Good seeing you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great day. See you. Bye. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, we will put uh, a link to ITL um, and the product line as well, as well as contact information. Make sure to check them out. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Construction Show.